Hey, everybody. What's up? What's happening? Robert Kennedy III here. RK3. That's me. We are here with another Big View session. I'm so glad that y'all are joining us today. We've got the real estate YouTube goat in the house. We've got Mike Sherrard with us. We're going to be chatting with him in just a little bit about how you can turn your YouTube live or your YouTube into millions of dollars. Y'all want millions of dollars, or is that just me? Maybe it's just me. <laughs> well, listen, we're going to talk about it today. Do me a favor. Let me know where you are. I see we got Steven in Gasser from Parkland, Florida. Yep. Rob Rosa. Love the background. Yes, I'm out hanging out about with the people today. Yeah, we're going to make this thing fun. Listen, y'all, do me a favor. If you've got a question as we go through the interview session today, type the letter Q and then you can put your question after that so that we can make sure that we are answering your question. Also, we're going to have a giveaway at the end of the session today. So do me a favor, hang with us. Make sure that you stay with us all the way through. And I know that you want to stay through because it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be an amazing session. You won't want to miss a moment. So before we jump on in, uh, let me tell you a little bit about me. My name is Robert Kennedy the third RK3. I run a training company on communications and storytelling. We do that mainly for the real estate industry. I've been speaking at Michigan Realtors, NAR, Next, and quite a few associations over the past year. So if you are interested in learning how to be more confident on camera, getting better on video so that you can generate more leads and sales, let me know. All right. So let's jump on in. I want to bring up my friend today, Mike Sherrard. Mike, what's happening, buddy? Tell us, tell us what's happening in your world. Hey, man, I'm let's I'm go. excited to be here. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm so glad that you're here, man. Listen, I've been I've been excited. I've been waiting for this for um, like three minutes. No, uh, seriously, I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for this for a little while because, as I mentioned, I am also in the real estate space. And one of the things that I did when I first got back into the real estate space, I started to look up YouTube channels and how to get more successful on YouTube. Because the old way of prospecting, the old way of making sure that you got in contact with people, sending out the postcards, walking around the neighborhood, do, I didn't want to do that anymore, man. My knees, my knees don't, don't work that well. <laughs> anymore. So I was trying to figure out what is a great way to sit in my home studio and hang out and do what I love to do anyway, create content and still be able to reach people and generate leads. And so, of course, I came across Mike Sherrard uh, amongst a lot of other great real estate people, people who are crushing it, killing it on YouTube. But your stuff stood out not just because you're crushing it, but because the quality of it, the the the, the background, everything. And your hat is pretty doggone sexy. What's on the hat, man? Tell us a little <laughs> bit about the hat. Yeah, that's uh, that's my revenue share organization. So the Wolf Pack, and uh, you know, the mindset behind that is a lot of agents feel like a lone wolf. So uh, why not create a pack that people can run with? Love it, fantastic. So I want to stop there for just a second because um, when we talk about money mindset, when we talk about growth, a lot of us, especially if we're buying stuff online, we hear and feel like. We've got to do this ourselves. You just alluded to the fact that you've got a wolf pack. You've got to run with some people. How did you come up on that mindset? Was that something you always had or was that something that was poured into you? Yeah, I think it's, you know, something that's poured into you. You know, I see some of the comments here and, and people from the pack, which is awesome. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's the typical quote that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go yep. far, go together. It's yeah. the all of us only have a certain limitation to our skill set. And, you know, it's difficult when you're doing it alone, but also yeah. you want to partner with people that have complementing skill sets to fill in those weaknesses. And, you're, you're, you know, the strength is in numbers. So when you can find like-minded people, your entire life and your business changes. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I just want to acknowledge some people in the comments here. We've got Laria from Atlanta, Georgia. My gosh, come on from Weston, Florida. Yep. Deborah Shaleen, realtor, exit real estate consultant, Lexington, South Carolina. She put all the stuff in the comments. Love it. So if you have not been able to find Deborah Shaleen, people, then <laughs> something's wrong. She's got all of her stuff. Uh, Narhu, thank you, Rob Rosa. Excellent. Dolly Nicholson from Washington, D.C. Hey, I'm in Beltsville, Maryland, Dolly. So we are not far from each other. I love it. And viewing from Central Maryland, 
Teresa Kurtz. Hey, Teresa, your Maryland realtor. Yes, she serves the entire state of Maryland, y'all. All 400,000 square miles she serves. I, I love realtors who love to drive all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yadwinder from Toronto. Excellent. From Allentown, Pennsylvania. So glad that you're here. All right. So let's jump on into this thing, Mike. Uh, so YouTube, you're talking about how to turn YouTube views into millions of dollars. Uh, so let me back into this. I think I wanted to approach it from the, 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 the angle of initially getting YouTube subscribers and being monetized by YouTube. But let's not talk about it that way. Let's let's go from the, the other angle here. Um, when you're talking about turning your YouTube views into millions of dollars, what is the how, how exactly are you talking about doing that? What what are you talking about doing? Is it just you get views, people show up, they give you money? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's it's a great, you know, conversation to have. And I'm so excited about this because the myth about YouTube is that the way to make money is to get a bunch of views and YouTube's yeah. going to pay you a ton of money. And, you know, for us that, that are kind of in this space, we realize that I only make about five, six thousand a month for my YouTube channel from the AdSense and the revenue. Yeah. But when you look at being able to strategically drive traffic off of it, generate high quality leads, build the like known trust factor, that's where things are made is being able to direct traffic into the call to actions that you're looking for. So, you know, a lot of my presentations tailored toward overall service based businesses, but obviously being in real estate, I've helped agents close millions a year in GCI from their free YouTube videos, but that's all from traffic driven off of their channel. Love it. So for those that are not real estate agents, but love the big view app that are here hanging out with us today, what is GCI for those people? Yes, gross commission income. So the the commission that you make from selling homes. And again, because I know that this is a, a melting pot of incredible people from all yeah. walks of life. Um, this entire presentation is built out to be for any service base and honestly, even any products based business, but really leaning into the service based industries that we can uh, really help kind of skyrocket your income. Yeah. So what are some of the other myths that we have? You just alluded to one where people think just about the YouTube partner program and you're going to become a millionaire overnight from that. What are some of the other things that people are misconceptions about YouTube? Yeah, the biggest one is the vanity metrics. A lot of people think that you need a ton of subscribers, a ton of views to make a ton of money, and it couldn't yeah. be further from the case. You know, I was at the point where I had 1,700 subscribers, but was making six figures a month from the traffic from my channel. So when you start looking at this, oftentimes in service based businesses, we get paid pretty substantially for the clients that we worked with. So, you know, there was an agent that I have helped. He got 17 views on a recent video, but a $1.4 million listing that paid him wow. $35,000. Like, so to most people, the average person would say 17 views is a flop. That's a fail. It didn't perform. That's from a vanity perspective. But when you look at the quality of those, the people that were watching that content are highly bought in. So that's yeah. where it's really important to have a different perspective when it comes to YouTube. So for the skeptical people in the room, Mike, you 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 said somebody had 17 views, they got $1.4 million. Most people are like, well, I've made these videos and my videos have hundreds of views and nobody is seeing it or I'm not getting any comments, nobody's saying anything. What makes the difference between those videos that people are complaining about and that 17 view video that you're talking about? Great, great question. A lot of that is going to come down to what we'll dive into today is the strategic call to action. What I find a lot of times with the people that are getting views is that their call to action is, hey, make sure you like this video, comment, subscribe. Well, that's great. But if you're in a service-based industry, my question to you is, do you care more about likes, comments, subscriptions, or do you care more about mm -hmm. leads, conversations, and clients? So a lot of times they're getting the views, but then people are leaving that video, going to somebody else's channel that has a proper call to action and working with them. Yeah. So this call to action idea, though, that's I mean, I think that's that's cool if people are there. Mm -hmm. The problem that a lot of people are having is getting people to that video. Is it that I shoot a video and I walk around with the link and when I meet strangers, I say, hey, watch this video and I text them the link. What is it that causes people to actually come over to the videos to then generate the leads that we're talking about? 
Yeah, a lot of times, and, and this is not the answer most people want to hear, but it's just the truth, is that if you're not building the momentum that you would like on YouTube, you just simply have to put out better content. And I think it comes down mm -hmm. to us being genuine with ourselves. You know, Mr. Beast, probably the king of YouTube, talks about this all the time, is don't even talk to me about your video's performance until you've put out 100 videos and consciously tried to improve every single one of those videos each and every time, right? So a lot of yeah. times... You know, we're looking at this through a lens that's completely biased versus saying, well, maybe I could be optimizing better. Maybe I could be delivering better. Maybe I could be cross promoting on some of my other platforms in order to increase mm -hmm. the exposure um, and being able to use, uh, you know, different avenues to continue to funnel people into it. Yeah. So I, I want you to get into your presentation in just a few moments, but I want to I want to hit a question that I'm seeing on the on the chat here because i get a lot of i'll use the word spam uh, on in my email from people who say yes i'm going to seo your videos or i'm going to do these things with your videos and get you tons of views mm -hmm. so the question here is from nathan it says do you know why boosting videos through youtube with google ads is no longer being pushed out by google so what are the what are we missing here yeah, it's, you know, it comes down to the question that I get a lot, which is, you know, Mike, if I want to build my YouTube audience, should I be spending money on this? Should I be paying? Should I be running yeah. YouTube ads? And my question is, or my answer to that is no. Um, you know, when you start mm -hmm. looking at this, I made the fatal mistake that many people did, which is I put out a video a couple of years ago and it was starting to build momentum. And I'm like, great, let's put some rocket fuel behind this, pump some money behind it, and it's going to blow up. Well, what you'll see is that when you're running YouTube ads, it's essentially forcing your video in front of people. Well, those people might not want to watch your video. So by doing right. that, knowing that watch time is one of the key components of its algorithm, people might see your video and then leave after 5, 10, 15 seconds. It decimates your watch time. So what you'll see is that the second you stop spending money to promote that video, it's going to organically die. So it's really important to look at, and I'll walk through how to optimize your videos to rank throughout this presentation, but it's really important to take an organic approach and also leverage things like earned media, which is collaborating with other people that might have bigger audiences. So you can leverage their audience and start to get creative with the organic avenue of growth. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So let's 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 pull up your presentation and let's start jumping in. While you're doing that, I'll just kind of look through a few of these. I see Michelle Logan saying that YouTube is a money market. I love it. Thank you, Michelle. Um, nobody ever says how much they make from doing house tours. Somebody named Ennis is making millions. Wow, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah, yeah so we've got a lot of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So we've got a lot of great people here. So those are that those, those that are coming in from DC and Maryland, the real estate chat room with Cheryl. How you doing? Glad you're here. Eve from Wellington, Florida. So glad that you're here as well. Dolly Nicholson. Uh, who else is here? We've got um, Natasha from Contreras Realty. Thank you so much for hanging out with myself and Mike Sherrard today. So Mike, jump on in, buddy. Tell us what we got. Yeah, let's dive in. So I'm really excited about this. And, and again, I think talking about what Robert mentioned in the beginning and alluded to is that the, the misconception is that you often need a huge audience and, and millions of views like NSEO Miser to make a ton of money, but that couldn't be further from the case. You know, sticking with the theme of a lot of realtors that I see on here, you know, I've helped agents with 5,000 subscribers do a million dollars a year from their channel so or more. So when we start looking at this, I really want to kind of set the tone here. And the first thing that I'm going to start with is kind of the mindset that we're going through. You know, I saw some people mentioning NAR. Um, I saw people kind of mentioning interest rates. And at the end of the day, this is the time that I get excited for. When everybody else is fearful, when everybody else is focusing negatively, I think it's really, really important for you to understand that this is separation season. And when we look at that, this is the opportunity where 70 plus thousand agents left the industry this year. Where are the clients from the 70,000 going to go? They're going to go to the people that weather the storm, follow strategies, leverage platforms like Big View to get a competitive advantage against other agents in the market that are being complacent, that are staying old school, that don't want to innovate, they don't want to learn something new. You need to get ahead of the curve and leverage AI and platforms like this to really differentiate yourself and separate yourself from other people. So my, my message before we get into this is just always be harder than your circumstances. 
the market's crazy. There's elections happening. There's all kinds of you know legal things going on. And what happens with most agents is they get distracted and they get distracted by all the negativity. But what you'll see, the ones that win is they'll understand that if you go filter your MLS by the properties that have sold in the last 30 days, there's tons of deals going on in every single market and you just need to capitalize on a few of them. So I wanted to set the tone there with a bit of mindset um, and start to kind of dive into this. If you wanted to, to touch on anything there, Robert. No, no, let's keep going. I think we've got some new people joining awesome. um, and people just loving, loving what, what you're saying already. So let's, let's jump in. We'll come back a cool. little later on. Awesome. Well, let's keep this going guys. Cause I got a lot to get through here with you, but I, I one of the things that's the most important is having a deep rooted why, right? And I think for me, one of the reasons why we see agents that are inconsistent on YouTube, not willing to learn how to use platforms like big view because it's new and it's different and it's not familiar to them is that their why is not big enough, right? So when you look at what YouTube has done for me, I've been able to retire my parents, I've been able to you know, take them on their dream vacations, I've been able to do so many things. And when I didn't feel like recording those videos, I thought about my family. When I didn't feel like learning a new platform, I thought about disappointing my family. And when you start looking at this, it's really important to never forget why you're doing this, right? Because at the end of the day, Every single person that, for example, gets into real estate, when they're getting their license, they're over the moon. They're excited. They feel like they're going to take over the world and they feel like this is what's going to change their family's life. Well, when you look at why they give up, they give up because they forgot where they got started. So you really need to think about it, And that's why vision boards are important uh, to think about why you're even doing this. So as we start to go through this, I really wanted you to understand that while you see my videos right now at 90,000 subscribers, which will hit next week, I didn't start that way. And many people don't, right? You have to get started somewhere. And we'll talk about what that journey is like, because I think a lot of people don't take the time to step back and, and think about how to get started. But this is the concept that I want you to understand. Again, Big View is paving the way in terms of the future of AI and tools for real estate, which I absolutely love. And I want to show you guys how important it is to capitalize on platforms that are developing features, especially for people in the service-based industry, like real estate agents. So I got this email about a month ago, and it says, Mike, you made it into ChatGPT. I was searching for some video ideas from ChatGPT, and look what it spit out. You're famous. So what it said, and we can go here and zoom in a little bit, is essentially this was an agent that was looking for how, what type of videos should he be recording as a realtor? And it gave him 15 types of videos. And then the last thing here from ChatGPT itself says, additionally, study Mike Sherrard's content for inspiration and consider adapting some of his successful strategies to your own style and niche. So now you have AI recommending you. And the reason why that's happening is because I leveraged searchable platforms like YouTube, right? Instagram's great. Facebook is great, but they're not that searchable. So the fact that I said, okay, I want to help agents leverage video and I'm going to put out as much searchable value driven content as humanly possible over the next couple of years. And now look at what's happening. So why this is important to you is that the general public still hasn't really caught on to AI. Well, you've got a two year runway to say, okay, you know, we'll look at Michelle over here. Michelle can say, you know what? For the next two years, I'm going to put out content about being the go-to agent in my market for first-time home buyers. And if you put out as much searchable content as humanly possible for first-time home buyers in the next two years, when the general public starts leveraging AI to search for realtors, Michelle is going to be the one that's showing up. So I just want to paint the picture of what's possible here when you start to leverage platforms like YouTube that are searchable. So. Let's set the tone with why YouTube. The first thing, especially for service-based industries, is establishing relationships through value. Right? So many people in every service-based industry say that they go above and beyond for their clients. They do so much more than every other person in the industry. But can you actually prove that? Right? It goes back to the concept of showing versus telling. When you look at YouTube and you look at a lot of the agents, for example, that I held, as people alluded to in the chat here, they don't even have listing presentations anymore. They show up, they pull up their YouTube channel and say, hey, 
do you want this type of exposure and this type of quality to market your home? And every single seller says, of course, because stats prove that 87% of sellers prioritize agents that use video because they know that it's the future, right? So when you look at data, 83% of buyers start their search with video. So when we lean into this, we need to start looking at the data and the data is telling us that based on consumer behavior, this is how people are now making decisions. And the example that I was allude to is that, let's say I backed into the wall behind me and I put a dent in it and I wanted to learn how to fix the drywall. Do you think I would either type into Google and say how to fix drywall, read a blog about it and try and follow along with written word or... Do you think I would type into YouTube how to fix drywall? And as somebody is doing it, I'm going to follow them. You would follow the video. So my question to you is if somebody's looking to move to Baltimore, do you think they would rather read an article about Baltimore? Or do you think they would rather watch Robert out there in his incredible suit walking around the community showing Baltimore, showing the community the amenities, the lifestyle, the weather, the vibe of it? We know the answer to that everybody would rather be there and see it through video. So that's why it's really important to start to lean into this because every agent says that they get into real estate because they, or any service-based industry, because they love to make an impact and they love to create relationships with people. But the question I have for you is, is the way that you're generating leads predicated on establishing relationships or are you running your headshot, which provides value to nobody? right? So we have to look at how you're actually going through your business. And the last couple of things is that the conversion rate, when people reach out to you, they've made up the decision that they like you. So if people reach out to me, they like my style, they like my vibe. If they don't, they're not going to reach out to me. So no longer do you have to deal with the nightmare clients or the people that aren't ideal clients for you because they wouldn't reach out in the first place. Now, it's also evergreen. And I think this is the most important thing, especially when we start seeing, you know, some of the incredible stuff like this live video here. This is going to be on YouTube for the next 10, 20, 30 years, forever, right? And so, you know, Robert and I were, were connecting about this in the beginning because I got started in, in real estate door knocking. And that was fine, but my business was only growing three hours a day when I door knocked, doing something that I hated, always trying to pitch myself. But when you look at YouTube, for example, if you put out a properly optimized video, it door knocks for you 24-7, 365. So now let's dive into the misconceptions. We kind of touched on this already um, in the beginning of the conversation, but you really don't need a lot of followers, subscribers, and views. Those are vanity metrics that people get so consumed with. It distracts you because there's a difference between tangible and intangible progress. And I really want you to understand that because so many people consider and measure progress knowing that what gets measured gets managed is all based on tangible outcomes. If I don't have a lead, I'm not doing well. Well, that's not the case because what about your ability to improve your delivery? What about your ability to get more confident in front of the camera? What about your ability to feel more natural, more consistent? Those are intangible ways you can make progress that are not reflected in your followers, subscribers, or views but are equally as important. And I see in the chat what makes a video properly optimized. I will show you, Susan, to at this video to make sure that, again, you can rank your videos number one. Again, you don't need expensive equipment. Everybody that I've helped uses their iPhone, right? And especially when you have apps like Big View, your iPhone turns into an absolute weapon of a tool, right? You don't need anything more than that. Good audio is important. But from a camera perspective, use an iPhone, use an Android that's uh, modern, new, you're set. It's really not saturated as well. I get this all the time. Well, Mike, there's five other people in my market putting out YouTube videos. Am I going to, you know, am I going to be able to stand out? And my question to you is how many people are in your industry, in your market? Oh, 30,000. Would you like to compete against 30,000 or the five that are on YouTube? You take your pick. Right. Right. So you could do the same as everybody else, or you could sidestep because chances are those five people are a different age, race, gender, demographic, language. There's something different about them that makes you stand out. And there's always going to be an audience for you. It's not going to be time consuming when I show you what to do. And again, when people say they have no value or 
no interest in you. Really what that means is you don't understand the value that you provide. And we'll get into that. But ultimately, if you live in a market, if you provide a service in any market, you've got more than enough to share because people want to know why did you move there or why are you staying there? right? What makes your service different? What makes you unique? You've got a plentiful amount of things to talk about. So the riches are in the niches. This is so, so important, right? So when we start looking at this, a lot of people will understand this concept, but not understand how it applies to them. So one of the things I was here is, Mike, I know that I need a niche, but which niche do I choose? And my response to that is, who are you most qualified to help? You were most qualified to help the person you used to be. I'll say that again. You were most qualified to help the person that you used to be. So why is my channel built on helping real estate agents scale their business, leveraging social media? Because I used to be an agent, hating my life door knocking every day in minus 10 in the snow up here in Calgary. And I thought that there could be a better way. So I found the better way. I proved it myself, and based on experience, I shared my experience. So if you're, for example, keeping the consistent theme of real estate, but this applies to all service-based industries, if you moved from California to Texas, you were probably most qualified to help relocation buyers that are looking to move to your market as well because you've gone through that journey yourself. If you have bought your first home, guess what you're probably qualified to help? first time home buyers. So look at your own journey, because that's going to be a guiding light as to who you are most qualified to serve. And that thus becomes your niche. Now, after you've identified the problem based on your experience, and being able to prove the solution to yourself, you need to start looking at audience feedback. Because looking at the data, what gets measured gets managed, the answers are going to be in the data. Once you put out about three months of value-driven content, test, 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 you can look at the data, which I'll walk you through, and it will show you, based on engagement, which content is building your audience. And thus, you can start to double down on that and back off on some of the stuff that isn't working so well. So it's an iterative process over time, and it's a journey. And that's one of my biggest recommendations for people is there's going to be a time where it's difficult to stay consistent, where you don't feel like recording, you're feeling burnt out on your journey, you don't wanna to continue to put out videos. You have to fall in love with the process. It's, you know, you're never gonna be happy when you get 10,000 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers or a million subscribers. There's always new levels to this. What you want to do yeah. is find love in the process. I found love in saying, wow, my video six months ago sucked. Now they're actually a little bit better. Now the quality is better, the background's better, the vibe is better, yeah. right? And I found love in seeing that end product of like a well-designed video with a really pretty thumbnail. And I'm like, damn, that's actually pretty good. You know, finding love in the process. Can we stop there for just a second, Mike? I think as you talked about niches or niche, depending yeah. on what part of the world you're from, um, I see Yadwinder's question in the chat and it said, should we stick to one niche on one channel or can we talk about real estate and some other topics? And I think that's a really good question because sometimes people create channels and they throw everything onto yeah. that channel. And you know, it, your audience may get confused, but there's also people looking at Instagram and some of these other platforms and seeing the kind of the lifestyle approach. To, to, to content. So what would you advise this person? What would you say to Yadwinder with regard to niches? Yeah, Yadwinder, it's, it's an incredible question. Uh, I get this all the time. And my answer to this is going to be um, something that's going to challenge you to answer your own question. And I use this example all the time, which is that if you were watching Netflix, for example, and you were watching Game of Thrones, and then every single week a Game of Thrones episode was coming out, and then suddenly one week out of nowhere, the cooking channel shows up. You were expecting Game of Thrones, but the cooking channel showed up. Do you think you're going to be excited to watch that cooking show? Probably not. So the mm -hmm. real answer to your question, Yavender, is you want to keep it specific to one theme, right? So we see this all the time in terms of real estate agents. They have a, a real estate channel, 
but a fitness channel or a real estate channel and then an educational channel. You need to separate it because your audience needs to know why they're coming there. So if you're splitting it and people don't know what to expect from you, if they don't know what to expect, they're not going to stay. So maybe the follow up to that is what about managing that? Because I, I, I'm, I am one of those people that that they call multipotentialites, right? Yeah. <laughs> Polymaths. We, we've, we've got we've got a lot of different interests, and then sometimes you kind of feel like, okay, if I've got to separate it now, I've got five channels. How do you manage five channels, or should I? at all? Do you recommend getting rid of four and dealing with one? How do you manage and grow at the same time? It's an amazing question, Robert. And, and my answer to this is always pick your priority first. So pick mm -hmm. which one is putting money in your bank account. Like what is your biggest priority right now? And focus on one. One of the core principles is that, and, and that I live by is that focusing on one thing at a time because the man who chases two rabbits catches none, right? So mm -hmm. what you'll find is that as you start to become, it's, it's difficult to be consistent with one channel, let alone multiple. So as you start right. to find efficiencies and you start to make more money from that one channel, you can build out a team, you can outsource, you can create leverage, and you can start to say, I'm in a position to add in more. But in the beginning, my recommendation is always get clarity on your number one priority and only focus on that for the next 12 months. Fantastic. Fantastic. One last question before you jump back in. So as somebody is starting out, I see there are a few people here, Lyria, a few people, Teresa, that are that are talking about this is their first time or they're fairly new in the YouTube game. Where do you recommend they get started with regard to recording videos? Am I just it's, let's stick to real estate for a second. Am I just going out and recording houses? Uh, am I talking about myself? What What is it that I do? Actually, let me back up for a second because one person asked about faceless yeah. videos. So maybe we can combine those two things into the same answer. If I'm getting started, what's what do you recommend for a, a beginner in the video space? Definitely, amazing question. Faceless, there's always a place, right? It, but in my opinion, that place is not real estate. It's not service-based. Mm. So yes, if your goal is just to make income from YouTube, faceless channels can work. But if yeah. you're service-based, you are your brand. Your beautiful face is your brand, right? So you need to be in the videos because people aren't going to be able to build a relationship with a faceless channel. The question I always ask right. people is, who knows the you know founder of Southwest? Probably nobody airlines, but who knows the founder of Virgin Airlines, Richard Branson, mm. right? Who knows the owner yeah. right now of Honda? Probably nobody, but everybody knows Elon Musk because he's right. humanized the brand. So it's really important. And when you're getting started in, and for realtors, I've got endless videos on my channel giving you the exact videos to record, but I always look at the kind of core videos that are going to relate to the most amount of people. So if you're in real estate, for example, market reports, property tours, community tours, and relocation. Those are the four core yeah. pillars you want to focus on. And then after you start putting out content consistently, the data will mm -hmm. show you, oh, maybe your niche is property tours because you're incredible at showing them off. Maybe you're data driven and it's more analytical. So you do market reports. So after you try everything in the beginning, then the data will start to guide you. But in the beginning, just try it all. And as Steven said, just press record. Press record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Let's keep going, man. Awesome. So the honest truth about scaling, this is really important. And, and it kind of goes to um, a theme that I get all the time, especially in the service-based industries, is people saying, well, I want all of my leads to come from video. If you want full-time income, from anything, YouTube in this case, you have to put full-time effort into it. So what I see is people, you know, wanting to get leads from their YouTube channel, and then suddenly they're, you know, putting in very minimal effort into creating content, and they're just doing it to do it to have a presence, but they're not doing it with the intent of excelling at it. So it's really important to go in with that right perspective. Now, my recommendation is always to study channels both inside and outside your industry. So to give you some context of what I do, I would study some of the top people that are in the same lane as me in the same industry, 
But then what I would do is I would study people like Alex Hermosi or Inman Gaji or any of these people and say, they're not in my space, but they're incredible at hooks. They're incredible at delivery. They're great at, you know, what Robert's the master at, storytelling, right? Facts tell, stories tell, right? Facts sell or facts tell, stories sell. So when you look at this, at the end of the day, your story is the most important thing that you need to get out there. Because what I'll tell you for any service-based industry is that it's very easy to leave a service. It's very difficult to leave a friend. The reason why they would consider you a service is they don't know your story. They don't know what makes you tick. And thus, there's no intimacy in terms of the connection there. But the reason why you all know Ryan Serhant if you're in real estate or Gary Vee if you're on video is because you know their story. So when you share your story on a platform like YouTube, people become indoctrinated into building that friendship and that connection with you, which generates more repeat and referral clients. Now, you just want to consistently improve on every single video. And, and a lot of people are... are the most harsh critic on themselves. And a lot of times I see people beating themselves up because you're looking at somebody that is doing incredible on video, but not accounting for the fact that they've been doing it for 5, 10, 15 years, right? In order to get yeah. started, you're not going to be the best. It's just like riding a bike. You know, when you first got on a bike, did you just zip down the street and not fall without training wheels? No. When you're doing anything in business, anything in life, you have to accept that it's a process and we will start to go through that. Um, now, Robert kind of alluded to it earlier, which is in the beginning, you're going to have to probably do a lot of things yourself. But over time, there's two certain things that you need to look out for. Number one, outsourcing. As you start to make income, I always lived by the principle that I reinvested 30% of my income back into my business. But then, you know, we're in this beautiful blessing of a time right now with AI, where you've got tools and platforms like Big View that can help offset some of that, where you can still do it yourself, but you've been able to create leverage without having to pay somebody, right? So it's really important to look at some of these initiatives as you're going through your journey. But this is where the game is won. And this is where you start to make millions of dollars from your YouTube channel, which is over delivering on value. So this is a, a concept that might rub some people in a quirky way, but it's a concept that I believe is what separates the gap from those that are serious about this, which is that you need to make your free content better than your competitors' paid content, right? So for me, in an industry where I teach agents, I've bought the programs of everybody else in my space, and I said, I'm going to make sure that my free YouTube videos are more valuable than their programs that they charge thousands of dollars for. And what that does is it builds trust. It builds a dependence on you predicated on value. So always go deeper when it comes to value. If you're doing, for example, in real estate, a community tour, and there's somebody out there that has a community tour in your market already, and it's got thousands of views, but it's five minutes long. Go put out a video very similar to that, but make it 15 minutes long and go deeper. And what you'll find is that the ones that win are the ones that go deep on value because people are going to reach out to the agent or the person that gives them the answers that they're looking for without having to go down the rabbit hole even further. So if you're ever asking yourself this question, am I giving too much away for free? Know that that is a perfect sign that you're giving away the right amount. You can never give away enough. And what I'll tell you, and I hope if anything sinks in to you watching this today, information is free, transformation is paid. So information is not novel. I will give all of you my playbook for free, but the transformation comes when you work one-on-one -on -one with me or when you work with Robert to share your story. That is transformational. That's what justifies value. So your information about moving to your market is free, but to get your help to help them buy or sell a house, yeah, that's paid, right? Because it's transformational, not transactional. So that's a big difference I really want you to think about. Now, this is where things get exciting. And this is where, as Robert alluded to in the beginning, 
about people that get views, but not clients. This is the number one reason why. You need to get clear on your desired outcome. I see so many people that are getting hundreds, even thousands of views on their content, but they're not getting any leads. And the question is, when I look at their videos, every time they do a CTA or a call to action, they're saying, by the way, my name is Mike Sherrard. And if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Well, that's great, but you're 30 seconds in. You haven't even earned their subscription. You haven't given them anything of value. And is that what you really want? You want to have 100,000 subscribers, but no deals closed, no clients working with you? Do you want likes, comments, subscribes, or leads, conversations, and clients? I think we all know the answer to that. We want leads, conversations, and clients. So when we start looking at how to make a significant income from YouTube, what you want to do in the beginning is hook people, then say a call to action that is specific to what your end goal is. So I would hook people based on my video in the first 15 seconds and say, by the way, my name is Mike Sherrard, your Calgary real estate agent. And if you would like to know anything else about buying, selling, investing, or relocating to Calgary, feel free to contact me. All of my information is in the description. And I would love to connect one-on-one -on -one with you and see if there's anything I can do to help you with your journey. Well, now... Can we pause on, can we pause on the call to action for just a second? Because I, I love what you just said with regard to the by the way. Yeah. Um, as a storyteller, one of the things that I deal with people, especially real estate agents all the time is, um, when you ask about what their desired outcome is the answer for a lot of real estate agents, well, of course it's to sell a house. <laughs> it's to get them to hire me as their real estate agent. And so when they do videos, they immediately start with, hi, I'm Robert from blah, 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 realty. Mm -hmm. And um, here's my number and you should call me. And the majority of the video is that, oh, by the way, there's these, these, this nice grass, this nice neighborhood, but call me. Yeah. <laughs> and so can we, can we talk a little bit about um, calls to action that don't come across as smarmy, sleazy, hard sell, used car salesman? You know, how, how do we do that in a way that is authentic and yet creates that desired outcome that you're talking about. Yeah, it's it's so important. And I think, again, you, you even touched on it, Robert, which is not leading with that, right? You know, if I was to do a video about five reasons to move to Calgary, I would say something in the beginning like, people are wondering if they should move to Calgary or Vancouver, but there's five things that I want to talk to you about today as to why Calgary is probably the right choice for you. Two of them you probably weren't expecting. And then, okay, mm. I hooked them a little bit. Now, what are the two I wasn't expecting, right? So you've hooked yeah. them. You've given something of interest. Then I would say, by the way, my name is Mike Sherrard, the Experial Thief. If you'd like to know anything else about this, I would love to have a chat with you. It's not, it's not call me and I'd love to be your agent. It's not you have yep. to get in touch with me. It's, hey, I'd love to chat. Like, I'm here for you, yeah. right? And, and offer yourself a value. And, and I think there's also other ways to look at different call to actions that are going to excite very natural engagement. Like one of the things that I always did as a real estate agent is after I did that, I would say, by the way, if you're in Calgary, I'd love to know, drop a comment and let me know what your favorite restaurant is. I'm looking for some new ones and yes. I'd love to know what yours is. Well, yes. when they say your, their favorite restaurant is whatever steakhouse, comment, reply to that comment. Well, what's your favorite thing to get there? And now you start to create dialogue and they see, hey, you're a real person. Like you're just drumming up conversation. That's where yeah. the magic lies. And even tag the steakhouse because that is, if they've got a YouTube channel, that's another lead. That's another avenue for, for new conversations. So I love that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for stopping on and sharing a little bit of insight on that. All right, let's keep going. Definitely. Okay, cool. So, you know, when we start looking at this, as, as Robert alluded to, the call to action is so important. And, and after you've given value, you can say, you know, if you would like to know more about um, and keep your finger on the pulse of the market here, then please make sure to subscribe. And if you got any value from this, like the video and, and ask that. But if you don't call the action, no action gets taken. So I always encourage people to get clarity on what your desired outcome is. And also, Pin that link that you have, your desired link, to the top of the uh, uh, pinned comment, right? So when you start looking at engagement, you can write your own comment in there. You can pin it to the top. So if you've got a 
consultation link, a Calendly link, a lead magnet, a free resource. Pin that to the top and tell people, hey, if you'd like to know more about this, feel free to check it out. It's below. But now let's start going a little bit deeper. And you can see here, this is how I built my business to multiple seven figures per year from free organic traffic that came from YouTube is I would deliver value and I would say, by the way, if you would like my free training where I break this down even in more depth and more clarity, just drop a comment below and I will reply with the link. Notice the difference there of what most people do. Most people say, click the link in the description. I said, drop a comment and I will reply with the link. So what happens if you go to any of my tutorials, they've got thousands of comments the exact same comment, I want the free training, and the same link is posted in every reply. You could go click on any of them, but because you told them what to do, they do it. And that excites mass engagement and it drives mass traffic organically, not just to your link, but to your video because of the engagement that's happening. So that was one of the biggest things that shifted me from making thousands of dollars for my YouTube channel to millions of dollars from my YouTube channel is shifting the way that I ask for them to take action. Not just click the link, Love it. but comment. Love it. So people will go to the free training. And of course, at the end of that is where the call to action is to pay, work with me, or whatever the situation is. Now, customer journey for service-based industries is the number one thing. Customer journey is how people feel before, during, and after working with you. Right? A lot of service-based industries care before you work with them. They care during your experience working with them, and they let things slide after. So you have to be very clear on the fact that the game is won on the back end, which is when people have already worked with you. How are you nurturing them going forward? And one of the best ways you could do it is, again, leveraging AI, leveraging Big View, and looking at how can you create value-driven content on an ongoing basis to send to your database that you should be building with 5 to 10 people per day. So that's one of the easiest ways to separate the gap and also differentiate yourself. And if you want to know more about customer journey, I always recommend uh, George Bryant. He's got a ton of incredible content on this. Um, but looking at that from an experience perspective, because that's all that our journey is. So the last thing before I kind of show you how to rank your videos, number one, is looking at studying the data, right? We talked about this many times. What gets measured gets managed. And after you put out about three months of consistent videos, and I consider that three months of two videos a week for three months straight, then you start to come into the analytics and it will tell you where you should go with your channel. So when you come into the analytics, you'll see the screenshot here. You'll see that you've got key moments for audience retention. And it's going to show you the top five videos that had the best hooks. Well, you should probably rewatch those first 30 seconds of those five videos and say, what did you do here that you didn't do in other videos? Well, when we go a step further, if you're looking for video ideas, let's look at this next one. If you come into the audience section of your analytics and you look at channels your audience watches, well, it might be a pretty good idea for you to go to each of those channels, filter the videos by most popular and recreate them with your own twist as well as the videos growing your audience, because the data is telling you that that's what your audience likes to see. And there's even layers deeper. It shows you the exact videos your audience watched. So if your audience is watching these videos, maybe you should recreate those exact videos and put your own spin on it because they've already raised their hand and said, I like these videos, right? And lastly, one of the things before we go into the optimization side of things, meaning how to rank your videos, is creating community, right? Again, looking at information is free, transformation is paid. This is where you start to win, is creating a community. If you're a local real estate agent, creating a Facebook group where you can bring other Austin real estate fathers together or mothers in Chicago together, like looking at different communities, people that have similar hobbies, passions, that's where you start to build intimacy with people. So this is the hook that we already talked about, right? So I don't need to go too deep into this, which is the formula for a proper video. 
you want to hook people within the first 15 seconds, right? After you hook, you want to do the call to action. So many people leave their call to action to the end of the video. They're 10 minutes into the video. The video is 10 minutes and 30 seconds. And they say, by the way, if you'd like to know how to move here, please make sure to reach out. Well, if you look at any retention curve, 70% of people are gone by the end of your video. 30% of people are still there. If you look at a retention curve as well, 70% of people are still there in the first minute. So let's do your call to action within the first minute so that that way the majority of people are actually seeing it. Now, this is where things get exciting. And for agents that are putting up videos or service-based industries that are putting up videos and they're not getting the attention that they deserve or that you think they deserve, this is usually why which is optimization, tags, titles, descriptions, thumbnails. When we look at the thumbnail, I always encourage people to outsource this, um, but your face needs to be in the thumbnail. Whether you like it or not, has to be there. This is a branding exercise, right? You want people to get to know you, right? Um, the text needs to be big, bold, and legible because of the fact that 82% watch it on mobile. But the big one is that the text on the thumbnail needs to be different than the text in the title of your video. Where I see so many agents go wrong is they put the same text in both. People have two opportunities to click on your video, the thumbnail and the title. If they don't like the text in one, they're certainly not going to like it in the other. So you just lost 50% of the opportunity to convert. Whereas when you make it different, well, this video is about Facebook ads for real estate agents. And the thumbnail says Facebook just screwed realtors. Well, if you're a realtor, you want to know why you're getting screwed. So now you're going to click on it versus everybody else that is using a bland title. When you're looking at a title, you want it to be very literal. You don't want to be leveraging clickbait. You don't want to be trying to hook people randomly with something that, you know, over promises and under delivers. You want people to look at this and say, what would my ideal client be typing into Google or YouTube for my video to be the perfect fit? That's the question you have to ask yourself. What is the cost of living in Denver, Colorado? What are the pros and cons to moving to Calgary, Alberta? Like what is your client searching because it is a search-based platform? Now, the last part I want to touch on here is the tags. This is where things get exciting. And honestly, this is where people charge so much money to teach you in their paid programs. And it doesn't you know, register with me because I want to give it to you guys for free. The way that you win on YouTube with optimization is the tags. The title, the thumbnail, the tags. When we look at the tags, what you'll see here, make it full screen so you can see it a little bit clearer, is that this video is about Facebook special ad category for real estate agents specifically. So when we look at this, if I gave you a screenshot of those video tags and I didn't tell you what the video is about, I didn't give you the thumbnail, I didn't give you the description, I didn't give you the title, I can guarantee 100% of you watching this could still tell me exactly what my video is about just by looking at the video tags. That is where the game is won. I don't have Facebook there. I don't have Realtor there. I don't have real estate. I don't have EXP. I have Facebook ads for Realtors. I have Facebook special ad category for housing. It is all hyper market and niche specific, right? So that's the litmus test that you want to go through is send your tags or your keywords to a friend and say, hey, John, can you tell me what my video is about? I'm not going to tell you, but just tell me. That's a crazy litmus test that will help you optimize your videos to rank them in your market. And it works every time. Can we lean into tags for about 30 seconds, Mike? Yeah. Because I think when you say tags and then keywords, a lot of people mix those up or they think that they're one and the same. And by extension, they when we talk about tags, tags, they're, they kind of put in one word. And I see that you're putting phrases, almost, dare I say, sentences in some cases. Tell us a little bit about how we can think about or come up with effective tags for our videos. Yeah, it's, it's great. There's there's a couple different things. I'll give you uh, one that is a, a thought process and the other that are tools, right? There's incredible mm -hmm. tools out there like TubeBuddy and vidIQ. I use vidIQ. They're yep. free, right? So we're not trying to pitch anything here, but there's tools that will guide you 
in terms of what you should be using. But simultaneously, when you're looking at the tags, what I always recommend people is you've got your title. Your title could be five reasons to move to Denver, Colorado. How many different things could people be searching into Google or YouTube for your video to be the perfect fit for that target avatar? Well, yeah. they could be typing in relocating to Denver, Colorado, best Colorado real estate agent, best communities in Co Denver, Colorado. But what you need to do is just think from your client's perspective of what would they be typing into any platform for that yeah. video to be the perfect fit. Right. So what you'll see agents do wrong or anybody does wrong is they put in realtor or yeah. Denver. Well, if somebody put in Denver, maybe they're searching for restaurants. Maybe right. they're searching for schools. Maybe they're searching for bars, but you want them to be searching for homes. So you have to get clarity and make it hyper specific to what your target avatar would be searching for. Awesome. That's super helpful. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's keep this rolling. Um, so the next thing, one of the most important things of the YouTube algorithm is we've got watch time, returning viewers, click their rate, and verbal delivery. So watch time, we talked about that, hooking people, giving them a reason to stay to the end. Click the rate, we talked about that, which is how many people decide to click on your video versus the other ones, which is thumbnail and title. Verbal delivery, it's really important because as your video uploads onto YouTube, YouTube transcribes it and it already knows what your video is about. But returning viewers is where the magic happens. Convenient sells. We all know that's why McDonald's exists. Why convenience stores exist. Convenient sells. So YouTube wants people to not just come to your YouTube channel, but stay and return to your YouTube channel. So what you'll see in every description of any of my YouTube videos is at the top, I'll have my convert. I'll have my call to actions that I want people to click on. Below, at the very bottom, I'll have cross promote, which is cross-promoting to other social media platforms. But in the middle, I will make it easy for people and say, hey, if you loved this video, here's other videos and other playlists that I know you're also going to love. And now instead of them having to go to my YouTube channel, filter by 600 videos and try and figure out what the next one they should watch is, I'll just make it easy for them because me knowing my audience, I know what they should be watching next. So I'm going to give it to them. So when you can do that, now your entire description becomes something that starts to convert for you. So this is where things start to get important, right? I've kind of given you hopefully what you want to hear, which is the why, the how, the necessity. But this is where it comes down to what you need to hear. And I think not a lot of people share this side of things. And I really hope it hits home to you. <laughs> These were my first YouTube videos in 2017. I took the photos myself. I designed the thumbnail myself on Canva. I was bullied in high school. I had low self-esteem. I had, you know, self negative self-talk all the time. I was petrified of negative comments. I was just like so many people that was scared to get in front of the camera. But knowing your why, I knew that I also wanted to change my family's life. And I said, what's scarier? I'll give you guys a really important concept. It's called fear shifting. If you're going down an alleyway and a pit bull starts running after you, you're going to run away from the dog. Well, if you turn the corner and there's a lion there, you're going to run away from the lion toward the dog you were just running away from because the lion is a bigger fear than the dog, right? So getting in front of the camera can be scary, but disappointing your family should be scarier. So when we start looking at this, never forget why you're doing this and understand that the biggest fear is not achieving your potential in business and life and not giving your family and yourself the life that you dream of. So I got started and I put out two videos a week, every single week. And you can see it's a bit of a joke. My thumbnails were terrible. The delivery was atrocious. The quality was awful, but I got started and we start looking a year later and, you know, somehow after a year putting out content, I forgot to even know how to look at the camera. And in this video, there was a metronome going on every second for the entire eight minute video because I didn't know how to set up my audio properly. But I kept putting up my videos that year. And then I started to put out more videos and the thumbnails got a little bit better and the background got a little bit better. And I did it again for another year. 
and I did it for another year. And I did two videos a week for another year. And then we get to 2023 and here we are. So my message to you, as you could start to see here, is don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 20. You can see one of my first videos here versus how my videos look today. Night to day difference. <laughs> I told about the beard. <laughs> beard game. <laughs> I love it. Well, and and you'll see, guys, that it's a process. And if you fall in love with the process, I lived by a concept. If you can't do it for a lifetime, don't do it for a day. If you're not going to commit to this forever, don't even start because you're setting yourself up for instant gratification, immediate disappointment and failure. You want to approach this differently and say, I know that Robert and all these people have been proving that this works. I'm just going to follow their blueprint. And if it worked for them, it could work for me because we're just humans here, right? So I really encourage you to look at this and understand that we all had to get started somewhere. We all had videos that didn't look that great. And it was a journey, as you can see here from my subscriber account, if it decides to load, that it took me a year to get to 167 subscribers. It took me another year to get to 3,000, then another to 20, then another to thir uh, 50, and then here we are wrapping up the year with uh, 90. So there was a little graph here. Thank you for that, uh, Bruno. But we'll go on to the next slide, and we're going to bring it home with the mindset that you need to have. So you don't achieve your goals. You achieve your standards, right? Robert can go ahead and tell you how to share your story to the highest capacity that's going to move people like you never could have imagined and connect on an emotional level that will change your business forever. But if you don't execute on it, if you don't implement it, everything you just learned from him goes out the window. I just showed you exactly how to optimize your videos to rank number one, exactly how to convert views into leads, conversations, and, and clients, and everything that you need to do for YouTube. But if you don't shift your behavior, if you don't shift your standards, you'll never execute on it. So this is where the game is won, and then we'll open it up to Q&A. We talked about this, is the concept. These are my core values that I live by. Everything that I do in life has to check every single one of these off. One thing, focus on one thing at a time. If you wanna leverage YouTube, kiss TikTok and Instagram goodbye, ignore Facebook for the next 12 weeks, only focus on YouTube, one thing at a time. And once you become familiar with YouTube, then add in TikTok and say, okay, this is my next phase. But focusing on one thing until you've mastered it is where the game is won. So many people say, well, Mike, you know, the average millionaire has seven income streams. They diversify. Well, I say yes, but they built their first million with one income stream. So we have to get clarity on that. Also looking at being unbiased. This is what changed my YouTube channel forever. The concept of being unbiased and putting myself in the consumer shoes. So when I'm uploading a YouTube video, what I'll do is I will take my thumbnail and I'll put it beside the top three ranking thumbnails for that search topic and say, genuinely, would I click on my own thumbnail or would I actually click on theirs? And what you'll see is sometimes you'll click on theirs. How can you expect anybody else to do differently? And then I'll watch those three videos start to finish and say, hey, is my video actually more informative, educational, and valuable than theirs? If yes, good. If not, how can you expect anybody else to see that? So when you start looking at this, consistency trumps intensity. I see some people asking the question, how often should I post on YouTube? Well, I've posted two videos a week for five years straight, and it's built an eight-figure per year business. Well, I see so many people that get excited about YouTube and they're like, oh my God, well, if he did that with two videos a week, I'm going to do five videos a week. And that's great, but you haven't built up the stamina to do that. That's like saying I want to run a marathon and you're going to go try and do 45 miles the first shot, right? No, one at a time. So you have to be consistent instead of getting all excited, but you have to embrace delayed gratification. This is the worst question I get from anybody. Mike, if I follow your blueprint and I put out the videos that you told me to do, how long will it take for me to get a client? If you ask me that question, I know you're going to fail from day one because I'm going to tell you the average is three months. It's not going to happen to you in three months. So you're going to say, didn't work for me, won't work for me. I'm on to TikTok. 
Well, if you look at the people that have succeeded with YouTube, they didn't say, how long will it take? They said, I'm going to do this forever. And I know if I do the process properly, it will work out at some point. So if you say you're going to do this for the next 20 years and you don't get a client in three months, you're not even going to bat an eye at it. So it's really important to extend the time horizon for which you're expecting tangible results. And you need the discipline to put it in your calendar because the reason why most agents aren't consistent is because they don't put it in their calendar. And if it's not in your calendar, it does not exist. But you have to trust the process. Look at the amount of uh, incredible interviews that Big View has on their channel. People have given you the roadmap. And I've given you a bit of a roadmap today and said, here's where to get started. Well, that's like, let's say you want to learn how to play golf. And Tiger Woods comes over and says, hey, Mike, here's how you swing. Here's how you putt. Here's how you drive. And you're like, hey, Tiger, that's a good one. But I think I'm going to try and swing it this way. It's like, what? You had just had one of the people that have succeeded with it tell you what to do. And you say you're going to do it a different way. Just follow a blueprint that's been proven to work for so many other people. This is the formula. Again, if your videos aren't that great, your skill is zero right now, right? The formula for improvement is skill, volume, time. Your skill zero because you put zero volume into the activity, no time into it, and thus zero times zero equals zero. Well, if you were to go to the gym, maybe you want to lose 50 pounds. It, after one workout, do you expect to look like a supermodel? Probably not because you've got one repetition, one volume, 60 minutes of time. It's not that great. But over time, if you do it consistently for six months, you can start to see pretty significant improvement. So you just have to get the repetitions in because the secret of getting of making progress is getting started. And never forget we're going to open it up to Q&A, is that done is better than perfect. An imperfect video that is on your YouTube channel is doing a heck of a lot more for your business than a perfect video sitting in Google Drive or Dropbox that you're scared to post, right? Imperfect action is way superior to perfect inaction, and your videos will improve over time. So hopefully that gives you some clarity, and I'm really excited to answer some of your questions. This is fantastic, Mike. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. Yeah, there's some great questions on there. I, I'm i going to skip through some of them because we really we answered some of them earlier in the show. And so what I want to do is remind everybody that this is on the Big View YouTube channel. It is there for your consumption. You can use that scrub knob and, and rewind and replay this to your heart's content. There's some really great stuff inside of this episode. So one of the things that we spoke about earlier, uh, how can you reach an audience and get followers on the channel? That's a question from Niels. I know that we answered that earlier. So we'll move on to another question. What's the best way to make your thumbnail? We kind of walked through some of that when we talked about Canva is one way. Uh, and I'll just say it this way. If you are somebody that is, you're not at a space yet where you're able to hire a graphic design artist, or you're not able to find somebody decent on Fiverr or Upwork or somewhere, Canva has a lot of fantastic templates that yes. you can do little to nothing. All you got to do is switch the words and, may, and add your picture in, as Mike said, mm -hmm. and you will have phenomenal professional looking thumbnails. So uh, don't overthink this thing and don't spend time in the space where you're not an expert or where you don't have proficiency. What is it that you've got to do? You're the agent, you're the service provider, you are the the, the business owner, and you, you've got some great thoughts and some great nuggets to share with people. Lean into that, lean into what people want to know and, and the questions that they're asking, serve people in that way, and then use the tools that people like Michael are suggesting. Is it Michael or Mike? It doesn't really matter. My family still calls oh, me Bobby. Okay. It's Robert. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, use the tools that are suggested. Uh, and and he's, he's leaned into Canva or has done videos on Canva on his, on his uh, YouTube channel. So go check those out because you're going to get a lot of great content there. So here's, 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 here are a couple of questions that people have asked different ways. And I want to answer this one. Uh, they're asking about YouTube shorts versus mm -hmm. long form videos how long should the videos be or when you're starting out is it okay to do shorts versus the long form videos it's a great question so uh my my answer in terms of ideal video length and this is a, a, 
a bit unorthodox, but it's the truth, which is that mm-hmm. your video should be as short as it needs to be to the point where you have no filler, no tangents, no stories, no outtakes. But as yeah. long as it needs to be in order for your target avatar to get the answer that they're looking for and not have to go to somebody else's channel or video to get that answer. So what you'll mm-hmm. see in most service-based industries, I see the magical length kind of being between that 8 and 15 minute length. And that's enough to give proper context, proper depth, lots of value, but not be too long, but also not have a bunch of filler. Um, When it comes to shorts, shorts are incredible. I think, again, having omnipresence is great. But what you'll find, especially with the theme of this conversation here of being able to convert views into millions of dollars, is that you can't give enough context and value in a short form video to get people to make a decision on a $500,000 purchase of a home, right? You can Mm. get them interested. You can get them to click on your channel to find out more, but where the conversion lies is the long form. So short form is great for amplification of your brand, but then the conversion is what comes from the long form. Love it. Love it. So I'm looking at Steve's question uh, about how much time are you spending on working with clients versus how much time you spend on creating and editing content for YouTube. And I want to add into that. I know that answer differs based on where you first started out and where you are now. So can you share a little bit about your breakdown between actual actual work and creating yeah. YouTube content? <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, it's, it's a great question. Thank you. So You know, when I was the top producer of my past brokerage, I was, you know, doing a ton of deals, doing everything myself. I didn't have a team, but I was also doing my two, three videos a week, editing them myself, thumbnails myself on Canva. I batch content and I look at efficiencies. So what I did is I picked one day that was my slowest day, which used to be Saturday mornings. And it Mm -hmm. still is. So Saturday mornings from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m., I would block that off as a non-negotiable and I would record my entire month's worth of content and then I would go home and I would edit every single video, do the thumbnail, upload it, optimize it. And by the end of those hours, my entire month's worth of content was done. So genuinely, I looked at compressing time and I looked at creating efficiencies within my process. So when I was able to batch my content, I could get everything done and not have to take away from working with clients like many would, because it takes time to get set up, get ready, make sure the lighting is good, make sure that you're all set up and go, even in the right mindset, right? Because you have to have energy when you're recording. Um, But for me, that's what worked, was finding one day a week that worked slow, could be once a month, could be twice a month, but finding one day that you can block off as non-negotiable and batch all of your content. Fantastic. Uh, we This is normally an hour session, everybody, and, and Mike has been super generous, and we have actually gone over a little bit of time so that we can answer some of these questions. So what we'll do is we'll take one or two more questions, mm-hmm. and then we will log off for the day so that you could actually go rewind and watch the goodness that's in this video. So let's uh, look at Journey Home was asking early on what goes into a relocation video. Yeah, that's a really great question. And honestly, one of the best things you could do is go to ChatGPT and type in what are the five reasons why somebody should move to my market and it will give it Mm -hmm. to you, right? Or type it into Google and there will be blog articles already written about it in terms of other agents and turn their blogs into a video. But the reality of it for a relocation video is the the general basics. You want to get give people some understanding as to the cost of living there, the pros and cons of living there, the amenities, the weather, um, you know, some of the things that people love to do when visiting there for, um, you know, trips and vacations. So I like to use AI. I think that's going to be the easiest way for you to do it. Again, keeping in theme with big view, but um, my recommendation is to find a couple of the channels that have done well. They've got endless relocation videos and look at what they include and then just put your own spin on it. Fantastic. Uh, Nathan says, note that Big View AI is incredible as well. Yes, Big View yes. AI, the magic writer, the scripter, all of that is fantastic. The teleprompter is it's fantastic. So absolutely use that. Uh, Larry is asking, and what equipment do you use to recommend to use with the iPhone for a first timer? Big View. Let's just start with there. I mean, unless yeah. you want to just use, you can use the native camera app on your phones, but Big View has 
quite a few other things that are going to enable the production and the editing of this, making it a lot easier for you. And if you're not at a space where you're confident enough yet to be able to speak on video and you need to do a talking head video where you have a script, you can use the teleprompter to keep you on task and on point pretty easily. So let's do one more question and let me see what that question was. I had it, but then I lost it. Uh, boom. You know what? Um, oh, okay. So Niels had a question. No, that wasn't it. Okay. You know what? Let's, let's just end with this and let's just uh, ask you really quickly. Um, what is your outside of just hit the doggone record button? What is the one biggest piece of advice that you want to leave with us for today? Biggest piece of advice is get clarity on why you're doing this and yeah. share your goal with somebody that's important to you. When I set a goal to retire, you know, my parents, when I set a goal to take them on their dream vacation, I shared yeah. that with them and you tell me I didn't want to disappoint them. So on the days I didn't feel like doing what I know I needed to do, I did it. Yeah. Right. So many people keep their goals and their why to themselves. Share it with somebody that will hold you accountable and that you do not want to disappoint. That's Love my number it. one piece of advice. That is fantastic. Thanks, Mike, for joining us. Listen, we talked about doing a giveaway at the end. I know that Mike had a sub, some slides with a lot of fantastic information that he asked you go full screen because there's some stuff, especially with the tags and the area where he talked about the thumbnails. And there's a lot of stuff that I think you would you would benefit from in in reviewing and maybe even getting a closer look. So tell us about the the giveaway, Mike. Yeah, definitely. So there's there's my entire presentation, guys, for anybody that would like it. It's in the, the comments so you can click and download it all. And if you do have any questions about it, send me, drop a comment on this video. I'll be analyzing the comments or send me a message on Instagram. I'd love to pour into you and help in any way that I can. But hopefully that will give you a bit of a roadmap of where you can get started and how you can start to build momentum and eventually make millions from your channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mike. This has been fantastic. Mike Sherrard from the Wolf Pack, hanging out with us, sharing how to turn YouTube videos into millions and millions and millions of dollars because y'all know that you want that. Hold on one second. I got a friend that I want to introduce to you before we leave. All right, okay. <laughs> Hey, y'all, listen, this has been another phenomenal Big View session. We'll see you next time. Join us. Look to the make sure that you're subscribed to the Big View YouTube channel so that you can get notified when we drop fantastic new video content, not just about how to use the Big View app, but how you can transform your life and your business with Big View. See you soon. Storytellers, thanks for joining me on the session. I'm so pumped that we were connected and I hope you found real value in what was shared. Do me a favor, I wanna continue the journey with you. Head on over to getintouchwithrk3.com. That's right, getintouchwithrk3.com. On that page, you'll find all of the different places on the interwebs that you can get connected with me. And there are also some great resources for you to download. Download them because they're designed to help you become better presenters, better communicators, and video storytellers. And that's what we need more of in this world, right? <laughs> Listen, get connected. Go to getintouchwithrk3.com. I'm RK3. And I hope to see you in my inbox real soon. New teleprompter create videos you're proud of. Easily trim your video by selecting the words where you want to start and end. Color your presentation with automatic subtitles and highlighting keywords. Add your brand logo. Add music for an emotional touch. Add your contact info on an animated business card on all your videos. Easily replace green screen with an image or a video loop. Stand out with a web page with your logo, your video at the center, and personalized button for visitors to interact. It's one tap to simultaneously upload your videos on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Always know what to say next with the Big View teleprompter.